Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series here, we're going from Earth out to Jupiter, and we have the luxury of using the Aero Freighter. And I want to state once again, I know I already said this in the first two parts, but I want to be clear, the uh, Aero Freighter is not available for download for Orbiter 2016. Um, this is a beta version that I'm just testing, so uh, you can't get it right now, unfortunately. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the Aero Freighter and switch camera views and pick up where we left off. So in part one, we found a potential date to go out to Jupiter. And the date that we found was, uh, let me make sure I have it here, 59383. That's actually today. So I need to do a quick save. I think um, one second let me get back on track here so the date that we found right was five nine seven uh, three five that's going to be our eject date but the date that I'm recording the video is uh, Friday June 18th or the 18th of June depending on which country you're from uh, 2021 and so this was this happened to be the first plan that we found and it's it's reasonable again it's not perfect but uh, we, we compared in, in video number two, we compared uh, the time of flight and the total cost and our inclination with like two or three other points. And I just decided that I like this plan the best because the total Delta V cost between this plan and the other ones that we found, um, it, it kind of depends again, you know, how you, what you consider a lot. But I don't think that those other ones were a, a massive savings. We certainly weren't saving like 25 or 30 percent or anything like that. I think the I think the lowest I've ever seen was like seven point something. I could be wrong on that, but it, 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 at the very least, you can get down to like 8.5. So if you're doing a pure DV freak mission, then this would be garbage. You'd be like, no way am I taking this. But you know, when we're trying to balance out uh, time of flight. Um, our arrival inclination and all those other things, you know, this seemed reasonable to me. So one of the next things I want to do before I do any more planning is um, I want to put Orbiter so that it's closer to this date that we're actually going to fly the plan. So we'll do that by pressing Control F4, going to the Scenario Editor, and going to Date. And I'm just going to put uh, Orbiter uh, about one day prior to this date. That way we have time to bring the XR5, XR2 up into orbit and rendezvous with the Aero Freighter. So let's go 59734.7 and hit apply and done. And as we did that, you'll have noticed that some of our stuff here changed, but it wasn't a massive change. Now, there is one issue with what we currently have going on. This Aero Freighter is currently in an, let's just call it an arbitrary orbit. It's not necessarily in plane to go out to Jupiter. So how do we, how do we address that? We're going to, uh, well, let's, let's go backwards first of all. Let's go backwards on this side and let's get some stuff set up. So one thing I want to do is, and I honestly don't even know what the altitude of this Aero Freighter is. It's probably a 200 by 200 or a... Uh, 300 by 300 orbit. So let's power up this side. Let's project and set our distance. So yeah, we're in about a 300 by 300 um, orbit and our frame of reference with the Earth is uh, a little less than three degrees. So we're mostly equatorial around Earth. Now one, one thing that I think is kind of cool is that, or that I like to do, or, or that I have done in the past, when I rendezvous with the Aero Freighter, I, I kind of think of the Aero Freighter is as like this like starship, you know, it's this huge thing. Um, so I kind of like the idea of having it in a really high orbit. So I, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scenario editor to just put the Aero Freighter up into a high orbit because we, we don't have to worry about like flying the Aero Freighter to any particular point. My, my idea for this mission is just to say this this was the starting condition all the stuff that I'm doing now was planning that was done you know over the last 10 years and by the time we get to the point where we're actually ready to fly the mission all those plan all that planning had already been done so as part of that planning 
I'm going to say that the Aero Freighter was, you know, was pl the, the plan was to have it in this high orbit. So currently we're at uh, six, seven or six, six, seven, one, oh, one kilometers. Yeah, that's, that's a 300 kilometer orbit. I'm going to say that we're way out there. You know, we're more like, um, so nine that added, that'd be what 600. Let me think about this for a second. Just bear with me. So if I went six, nine, that would add another 300. So that'd be 600. And if we go, let's go. Let's see, so if I want to add, I'm, try, I'm trying to think what, how high do I want to be? Let me go. So if I go seven, six, well, first of all, if I go seven, five, seven, one, that should be a thousand kilometers. I I kind of like that. Maybe maybe even a bit higher than that. Maybe maybe two thousand kilometers. So let's go eight five seven one zero one kilometers. Make sure we have KM selected, and then a zero eccentricity, and we'll hit apply. Now, if we look around, so now we have the Aero Freighter. You know, it's just it's 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 out there a ways. It's not so tight in around the Earth. And if we look at orbit MFD now. Yeah, we're at uh, 2.2, .2, so I messed up my number there somewhere. Oh, because, yeah, normally you add 200. Uh, normally you add 200 to the number so that you're above the surface by 200. So that was my mistake. So if I wanted to say, if I wanted to be exactly um, exactly 2M, I would be 8371, apply. And yeah, now we're at 2M. So we'll go with that. So, so that's kind of the first thing. Um, I would, I just want to say, you know, I'm, I'm out in orbit. Th this vessel, you know, was built, uh, and, and placed into a relatively high orbit. And, and again, all that was done years and years ago. So back on Transex, um, and I, I'm leaving this open for a moment and you'll see why. So back on Transex, so one of the first things that we'll want to do as part of our escape plan is we actually want to have a correct PE distance because currently this is not correct. So I'm just going to enter in uh, the same number that I put here. So 8371.01, and then we have to add E3 because this is in meters. So if we don't put E3 on there, or you can just add, you know, move the decimal three places. But I'll just do E3, enter, and now my PE distance matches, you know, what I put in, what, what the actual altitude of the aero freighter is. And then the other variable that we have to consider is our eject orientation. So currently this orbit that the Aero Freighter just happens to be in based on the default scenario that came with this beta version um, probably doesn't work for going to Jupiter. Uh, no reason why, no reason to think it would. So, you know, what we would have to do, what we normally do is we swing the white line over to our, our current location to see how far off our relative inclination is <clears throat> based on um, you know based on where we are in our orbit right now and currently we're pretty far out we're 43.37 degrees out of plane so one thing we could do uh, we could we could use a we could do a huge plane change burn plane change equals expensive but since I'm saying that all of this planning was done a long time ago then the, I'm saying as part of that plan, I would I would believe that the Aero Freighter would already be in the correct uh, would already be in the correct orbit for the flight that we're preparing. So we can use the scenario editor to bring down our relative inclination. I'm not super good at doing this, but uh, we can pretty much figure it out with our three elements here. And I'm going to start with uh, longitude. And that's going the wrong way. You can see that's bringing it, bringing the relative inclination up. And what's this one doing? It's not helping at all. Let me change my inclination here so that's going the wrong way. So by bringing down the inclination, I have to watch my eccentricity as well. But I'll, I'll fix that at the end. It's bringing down the relative inclination, but I, I know I know these other numbers all, are also a factor. So I can see bringing this one down is helping. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to try putting this to 184 and hit apply. Let's try 180, apply. So that's having a fairly small effect. What about this one? What if I go 170 on here? That didn't either didn't work or didn't do anything. Okay, I guess I guess I can't change that one directly like that. So let me try 170 on this one, apply. And as I make these different changes, I want to every now and then bring the white line back to my current location. Okay, so now we're down to 24. So we've got we've gone down significantly. Um, let me just make sure. I don't know how much that's changing. I don't think by much, but let me make sure I zero out my eccentricity from time to time. So bringing down the inclination was helping. So let's try 14. Apply. So that's helping. Let's try 160 here. I'm sure there's a good, a good, a, a better way to do this than what I'm doing, but I don't know what that is to be honest. Have to talk to Dimitri. <laughs> Say, hey, if I really wanted to bring down the relative inclination using the scenario editor, what, like, how do I do that without just purely guesswork? So let's go 140, and that's helping. Yeah, that's helping. So currently we're about 12 degrees out. Let's try 12 here. So that brought it down a little bit. Actually, no, it made it worse. So let's go the other way. Let's go 14. Okay, so this number seems to be about where it needs to be. Let's try 120. Apply. And yeah, we're getting pretty close now. So now we're only five degrees out. And please don't think of what I'm doing here as cheating. Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't, this is not cheating. This is just, this is just all part of the, the scenario setup. This would just be like if I did all of this off camera and then brought up the scenario and said, this is our starting point. I'm just creating a starting point, but I didn't want to do all of that off camera because uh, it's one of those things, you know, you watch and you don't know how I got there to begin with. So I'm just showing you like, this is the, like, essentially I'm creating a scenario backwards here and okay so now we're one degree out so did that help so now we're 0.8 out let's go a bit that way so just bear with me while I finish setting up our scenario here bring that down a bit So we're really close now. We're, we're with uh, one decimal point of precision, we're at 0, 0.0. So we should be really close to what, what I want to see happen here. So it looked like that took that the wrong way. So I think I went down, so let me go up instead. Um, let me go ahead and switch over again to here, just because I can work with these a little bit faster in this what I'm doing now obviously isn't real exciting stuff. So now we're down to 0 0.6. So I, if I bring that up just a little bit more and bring that around, now we're at 0 0.01. So we're almost at two decimal points of precision with 0, 0, 0. So we're really close. So let's bring that up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So with two decimal points precision, we're zero across the board, and then our next decimal point is one, zero. So this is very, very close to being in plane. Um, and with, with an aligned plane MFD, you would look at this and just all you would see was zero, 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 because you wouldn't have these extra, extra decimal points. So with that being the case, I'm actually just gonna leave it like it is. Um, because we're we'll, we'll have to refine anyway once we bring the xr2 up into orbit and dock with the aero freighter uh, we won't that we'll end up setting up a maneuver that'll override all of this but uh, that is most of this that's the setup for the aero freighter at least so so the idea just to recap 
the aero freighter, you know, was assembled at some point in the past, and and and, and this mission was its purpose for being assembled. And as part of all of that process, you know, the engineers and the uh, the team uh, put the the aero freighter up into this. Uh, you know, eventually, once it was built, they put it up into this high orbit, and they ensured that when they put it up into this high orbit, that it was in plane with the. Uh, that was in plane with Jupiter for the given launch date. So, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, a couple more minutes on this part of the video. One, one last thing I can do is we can go into the scenario editor and we can add in our XR2 because we don't have one yet. So let me go new and then come down the list and we select an XR2 Raven star. Actually, I'll, let me show how to do this, but I'm probably actually not going to do this. I'll probably edit the scenario file directly because I will use a different skin. But I will just create an XR2, which we now have here in orbit. And then all I would do is go to, um, actually, first thing I'll do is switch to the XR2. So apply and then turn on the APU. Um, and then put down the landing gear. I have no sound. I switched from, for this mission, I switched from XR sound to uh, orbiter sound because you get sound, you get more sound out of the aero freighter that way, but apparently it's uh, messed up my, my XR2 sound, so I have to think about that. But anyway, now that we put down the landing gear, we can go to location and just pick wherever we're going to where, where, where we're going to take off from, which for us will be uh, KSC. So we'll pick Cape Canaveral, and it defaults to landing pad one. Um, I'm not going to take off from the landing pad, obviously. So one last thing I would do. So the runway is over here. So this is a bit fussy, but I will. I want to move the XR2 over to the runway, and I don't know a really good way to do that. So we're going to do it this way. So bringing up the longitude is moving it to the right and bringing up the latitude is moving it up the map. So where's our runway at? It's up here. So we want to keep doing this. And then maybe a bit this way. And then we're going to change our heading to, I think this is a 330. So we'll apply that way we're facing the direction and then we need to move up a bit more and then this way a bit more. And that seems like a reasonable spot. And then now that we're, we're on the runway, now we can dial in the location with uh, you know these smaller controls. Oops. But you get the idea. So that gets us, you know, on the runway on the center line with the XR2. And it looks like we're reasonably centered. I think I'm actually too far down the runway, though. I think we would actually want to be up here. No, I guess this is okay. All right. So that would be that would be the other thing I would do in order to get the um, in order to get the XR2 created. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm because I don't like the default skin that much. I'm going to ed edit the scenario file directly and put. Uh, at the very least change the skin. So let me switch back over to the aero freighter. There's a very good reason to do this because when we save the scenario file, if we don't have transex loaded, <clears throat> then we will lose all that information. So let me go ahead and do a control S right here, save my scenario and we'll pause, switch camera views, uh, wrong key, switch camera views. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So we have done a lot of our setup. Um, in fact, I think we're pretty much done. So maybe in the next video, we'll actually be able to start flying. But in the next video, we're going to, uh, we'll have to maybe do a little bit of thinking about uh, the XR2 as far as taking off and getting it into orbit and rendezvousing with the, with the Aero Freighter. And that whole process will probably take, uh, I would say two videos, maybe three. So that's gonna be it for this. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, 
seeing this plan and again if it's if it's too fiddly for you then you can always skip past these but you know for anybody that wants to know how to how do you how do you set these things up especially if you're new then I think it's really important to include all these uh, videos and showing all these steps even if it's not the most interesting thing to watch but if you don't know how to do it then you'll appreciate seeing it so with all that said I will see you in the next video